When we examine a hundred random teenagers, we would find that while they all look different, their minds work in very similar ways. One or two, however, have minds that are atypical in a particular way. They could be diagnosed with autism. This happens to boys four times as much, perhaps because diagnosing them is easier. Children and adults who are considered autistic experience the world differently because they were born with various degrees of neuroatypical traits. Most autistic children have more refined senses and share a deep desire to bring logic into their surroundings. Some seek repetitive behaviors that follow specific patterns, and many appear to be asocial and avoid eye contact. Autism is not a disease and therefore cannot be cured. Since all our brains are different and there is an endless range of nuances in their architecture, autism is defined as a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum is high-functioning autism, also known as Asperger's syndrome. These children are highly intelligent and have extreme abilities and interest in specific areas. In the middle are those with average intelligence and some problems learning new things in school. On the far end of the spectrum are children with severe learning disabilities who may require support in their daily lives. Timo, a young boy, can help us understand how living with a neurodivergent mind can be. His mum noticed early on that her boy would avoid eye contact and that he would often become upset if she hugged him. He never returned smiles and engaging him in play with friends often ended in a tantrum. His mother suspected something to be wrong when Timo still wasn't speaking more than two or three words at a time, even after turning four years old. She sought help and Timo was diagnosed with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD for short. Timo has an atypical perception. When reading books or watching movies, Timo's brain picks up and organizes the information differently. While his neurotypical peers categorize things and form schemas, for example, they identify everything with four legs that barks as a dog, for Timo, each type of dog is unique and categorized in Timo's mind individually. His attention to detail and inability to generalize makes Timo more objective in his perception of the world and less prone to a framing bias. However, it also makes all sorts of new experiences incredibly complex, which is why he loves to follow a rigid daily routine to limit his sensory input. Timo is highly sensitive. His brain amplifies whatever input it perceives. He hears everything and has a heightened sense of touch. However, this superpower makes situations where many people speak simultaneously very challenging. Timo hears everyone but understands nothing. The sensitivity to touch makes eating an intense experience. If a texture or flavor is too much to handle, Timo won't eat it. Also, walking barefoot on wet grass or playing in dirt overwhelms his brain. He has a fascination with logic. Timo naturally looks for patterns that bring logic into this world. Sometimes, he also tries to bring order into his own behavior and ways of moving his body. When structured patterns are broken, he gets upset. It freaks him out when someone counts to eight but doesn't continue to ten. Doctors call it an obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. Timo experiences social disconnection. He has trouble connecting with others because social settings overwhelm his sensitivity and desire for order. Because human emotions are incredibly complex and don't follow a set predictable pattern, Timo often finds himself misreading situations and upsetting people around him. As a consequence, he avoids people and rarely makes eye contact, which doesn't matter that much to him since most of the things other people talk about are illogical, irrelevant and boring anyway. 
For four years, his mother had him treated by a therapist who would show him images of faces to help him learn to identify feelings. This meant he got better at identifying facial expressions and corresponding emotions. However, personally, he is still not very interested in reading faces or establishing new social contacts. He has two friends who share the same interests and couldn't wish for more. Since Timo's autism is not an illness we can treat, but rather a different way of him experiencing the world, the question remains whether we should try to change him through therapy or accept him for who he is. So, what do you think? Should we treat children with autism with therapy or celebrate them for who they are? Or perhaps do both? Maybe it's not their atypical minds, but our stereotypical way of looking at them that needs correction. To get a three-dimensional glimpse of how an autistic girl experiences her own surprise birthday party, or to download this video without background music, check the descriptions below or visit SproutSchools.com. Sprout's videos are published under the Creative Commons license. That means our videos are free and anyone can download, edit, and play them for personal use. And public schools, governments, and nonprofit organizations can also use them for training, online courses, or designing new curriculums. To help us stay independent and support our work, you can join our patrons and contribute. Just visit patreon.com/sprouts. Even $1 can make a difference.